We've been talking lately a lot about HF antennas, and there's been a lot of people that uh, have been buying HF radios and looking to put HF antennas up in their up in their location. So, really quick, uh, I've been working on a um, what's called an in-fed half wavelength long wire antenna. And a lot of you have probably heard of that. And the reason that I was interested in it is one of our club members lives in an antenna restricted area. So he happened to have a nine to one ballon, I think, and was trying to run, run random lengths of wire and trying to get on 80 meters and, 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 and it just wasn't working. So I, on a, on a whim, we went over there one day and we figured out that what we could do is we could run a wire, approx we don't know exactly how long his was, but approximately 130 feet, and then we lifted it. In his case, it followed the fence, and then it went up about 20 feet in this tree, came back down, ran around, and we put something similar to this. This is a, this happens to be a, a 47 to one ballon. The coax goes in here, it transforms the impedance from 50 ohms to somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,500 to 2,700 ohms. And then that's your that's your uh, antenna, and then the ground. You take this piece and you and you ground it and maybe put a counterpoise on it. And that just intrigued me, and it worked. That he was on 80 meters that night talking to all of us, and we could never ever hear him before he did that. Every piece of wire he put up, everything he did, every tuner he used, it wouldn't work until we got the antenna to be reasonably resonant. We got his 80 meter down to th about three, 3.1 to one, just enough to where his internal antenna tuner on his radio would do it. So we pushed auto, boom, it worked. So this is, an, this is a sample. This is a sample of the hot rotted version. Um, this is a current ballon and this is a 47 to one impedance matching and this is a fake antenna, it's 2700 ohm resistor. And after the meeting, anybody who wants to come up here and uh, uh, hear more about it and look at the meter and play with it, you're absolutely welcome to do so. It will be here. I'm not gonna do that now because I'm going to quickly turn it over to Bruce because Bruce is going to be specifically talking about the one-to-one -one current ballon, how he made them, and what their what the purpose for that piece is. That was my whole presentation. Thank I, you. I left out. <laughs> okay. I left out two things. Go ahead, Bruce. Hey, I'm Bruce uh, N6THN, and I'm going to talk about basically this this little tiny square box up on the top, and a, a couple links of wire could get your radio out. 500 miles, a thousand, or a couple thousand miles. So if you put 16 feet of wire on each side, that's called an inverted V for 20 meters. If you put 32 feet, exactly double, you would be on 40 meters, so 32 here and 32 there. And if you put 64 feet, you'd be on 80 meters. In, in other words, three meg. So it's the rig, the tuner, and this magic box right here called a Ballon, and I brought a homemade one. These go up to about a hundred bucks, and it's just made out of an electrical box. I made it yesterday and today. So this is where the wire comes up and attaches to the uh, your coax from your radio. Attaches right here, and then inside of it, da da, waterproof cover. And I dropped a screw. Is a real cool looking thing that looks like a Christmas ornament, but it's it's a little transformer like this. This is this is going into the next one. So anyhow, uh, juice comes up here, and then I made the wires like a drip loop, so water drips here and here, and they connect to these ring terminals. So it's held like this. So you got 16 feet going that way, 16 feet going that way, this is your ballon. This is a balanced antenna system. This will get you between a couple hundred miles and several thousand miles if you hook this up at your house and, and raise it up about 30 feet, like that. How many watts can that handle there? Kevin has told me over a thousand. On sideband. On sideband. So I just made a measured drawing at first and concept went to the hardware store, bought this box, and then Kevin helped me do this. And this goofy looking thing, does that look familiar to you? 
this goofy looking thing is the diagram of the uh, ferrite core, which is a 240-31. Yeah, those are 31. These are about 10 bucks. I mean, just think of this. At the store, they charge you about 100 bucks for this and the wire. So, so you just start with your core and you come up, like, let's take the red. You just come up. And I did this one this afternoon. Can you hold this up? You start with the red, which would be this side. And you start winding clockwise. You start over the top. And you start winding clockwise like this. Do, 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 do. Ten turns, and you come out on the bottom. So this red turn comes out on the bottom. So it goes on in the top, turns right, ten times, comes out on the bottom. The other one, on the right side, is a left-hand turn. So you put the wire in and you wind it through the hole. Left hand, left hand, left hand. On the last turn, it comes around here and comes out the bottom. So you got 10 turns here, 10 turns there. And that electrically makes this rig talk without goofy interference and stuff on your coax to your dipole, which is better drawn like this. And, and this thing is up about 30 feet. So this is the stock uh, plastic box. This is going to fit in there. And the cover is going to go on. And I'm going to hook up some wires. And I'll have a second one. And this one is ready to go. I just have to put the cover on. And um, the, these are uh, Teflon wires. And an interesting thing about Teflon wire is I did the match test. I put a match under the standard house wire and it turned black immediately and burst into flames. And this is a piece of Teflon wire. I did the same amount, like 10 seconds of match. And you can barely see a little brown spot. So the insulation on this one is Teflon. This one is PVC. So that PVC is a no, no use. Don't start getting your PVC uh, Ace hardware wire. You want to buy this Teflon wire, which is much tougher. You can't even get your fingernail into it. And then you can uh, wind your ballon and get on HF and start talking thousands of miles with the simplest little dumb thing hanging from a tree, going down to an insulator, going down to an insulator, regular old standard house wire here, and the, the, uh, the good wire here, and then this is your coax cable, any, well, not any length, but the right length, Kevin will tell you about this, basically like 110 feet. Yeah, into your house. That's my presentation. Thank you for paying attention, and if you want to talk to me later, I have this. Oh, couple I questions. See a question Go ahead. back there. Couple questions. Oh, I see another one. What about the angle? Is there, yeah, is there a one or two left for you? Well, <clears throat> the more you bring the angle in like this, the pattern goes in a circle and, and uh, what does it go? Straight up. Mm -hmm. And the more you stretch the wires like this, it, the more it pushes longer distance, but you miss the people in town. So that's a good question. This is a compromise between perfectly flat, which goes long distance, and straight up and down, which is uh, radiating omni. So this is the best of both worlds. It's at 45 degrees. The tech textbook, the dipole is feed point, I think, is around 75 ohm, 70 ohms, something like that. And when you drop the ends, all that stuff happens, and the feed point impedance drops a little bit closer to 50. But um, anyways, that, any, any other questions? I saw, I saw Richard. Richard? Ooh, good question. There's a chart on the Internet, and Kevin's personal experience came out with uh, to get several thousand ohms of blocking for the bad RF, you want to block the bad RF, but past the good RF. So you block the interference, but it ends up 
being about eight thousand ohms is it's really a lot. I don't. So I, we can straight through. It's like uh, it's like nothing. less than one ohm for the good signals, and then the bad stuff that gets reflected off your wires because they're a little bit imperfect. The bad stuff is um, converted and sent back to the antenna with this. The the ter yes, Richard, go ahead. One more question. Sure. No. Oh, no. no. I just gave examples. The ham bands are set up in multiples of double for each length. So 10 meters, 28 meg is 8 feet. So this will do 10 meters, which is 8 feet long. 20 meters, you just double it. It's 14 meg, 16 feet long. 40 meters, which is double again. 7 meg is 32 feet. 80 meters, which you cut 7 and a half, you come out with 3 and a half meg, 64 feet. And if you really got a big property, I'll just draw a dotted line here. 160 meters is 128 feet off the paper. Any other questions, guys? Thank we're gonna, you. We're Thank gonna, you. We're, for Bruce? Another question. Yeah. John? You might mention that how you count the turns. Each time the, the sure. passes through the center of the core is counted as a turn. Yes. Yep, all this wire on the outside is wasted. The only thing that actually works is the wire that goes through the center. So this one starting, that just went right there, that counts as a turn. It comes around again, that's two. And this last turn, it comes up and shoots through there, even though it's like hanging in the air, it's doing its work. Every turn that goes through the center of the core counts as a turn. So there's 10 turns on that. And uh, the length of wire, I just measured 36 inches. I took a piece of test wire and wrapped one turn. And then I unwound it and I said, oh yeah, that's two and a half inches, three inches. So then I multiplied by 10 and came out with, oh, I need 36 inches of wire, cut it, wrapped it, and I had this much spare. So 36 is actually a little too long. Cool. Thank um, you, thank you. <laughs>